Hello, and uh, today we're going to look at we're going to look at trim tabs and balance tabs. Okay, so um, straight away, trim tabs and balance tabs are a secondary flying control. I'm just going to put the tape in there. I'm going to cover trim tabs first. All right, so trim tabs. Um, if you you can find trim tabs on the the other ones you can find them on the rudder you can find them on the elevators okay the one i'm going to talk about is the trim tabs found on the elevators because it's the easiest one to explain so if you think about the elevators and we're flying along when we trim the aircraft um what we're doing is we're trying to account for a disturbance or, or, or something pushing the aircraft out of line okay if you imagine the pilot sitting there and again this is control not stability right so the pilot's sitting there and you've got the control stick and you find that for some reason when the aircraft's being loaded the aircraft is tail heavy right so there's too much weight in the tail so as we're flying along the aircraft keeps trying to climb like that so the pilot if they're going to fly from Newcastle to, to New York right they're going to have to fly the whole um, the whole journey with the stick slightly forward right to increase the lift on the tail and counter the fact the tail keeps coming down all the time to increase the lift on the tail and basically cancel out that effect okay so if the aircraft's tail heavy, it needs to have a little bit of elevator input. You have to push forward on the stick, elevator down, more camber, more lift on the back to account for that. Right, the problem with that is, you know, the pilot's got to do other things. It's got other controls to operate and stuff like that. So throughout the flight, what would be really useful is if we could have some way of just holding that elevator down in that position and making the neutral point of the elevator, instead of it being there, making the new neutral point because of the tail heavy situation slightly down like that. What would also be useful if you had a, a nose heavy situation where the aircraft kept like pitching down like that, if we could just put a little bit of elevator on and just keep it there just to counteract that. Okay. And that would be the same with the other ones. Okay, if the if the aircraft kept, you know, let's say uh, you had a military aircraft and it had maybe a bomb on this side and a bomb on this side or a fuel tank on each side and this fuel tank had dropped off um, on purpose, hopefully. Um, it would be heavier on this side so what we'd want is we'll want the yellow the yellow ones to be slightly in this position to just tilt it back into uh in into line right and with the rudder you might have a crosswind for example so if the aircraft keeps going to this way or this direction right you might want to put a little bit of rudder on and just keep that rudder on right just to just to counteract that crosswind situation right okay so with these problems we need to have some method of doing that and what we're going to do is we're going to use a trim tab which is basically a very small control surface attached to the back of the main control surface. So I'm going to draw it for you now. So what we have is we have our main uh, lifting surface. So for example, this one's going to be on the horizontal stabilizer, which as we know is an upside down aerofoil. And then we have the elevator on the back and we're going to put another further hinge there and we're going to have a little trim tab at the back of that. Okay, and very simply, what we've got is, if we want to put, if we want to, the, the first one we had was we had a tail heavy situation, so we want to keep this elevator down slightly to increase the camber, increase the lift on that. When you keep the elevator down, all we're going to do is going to put a trim tab which acts in the opposite direction to that elevator. So, our main part of lift in green here. Right, what we've got is, we've got, the main thing is, there's an increased camber there, right, and we're going to create lift, which is a control input, right, to make sure that that lifts the tail up. But we want a little bit of lift here, which I'm going to outline in red, so we'll have a little curve here, which is going to produce a small amount of lift in this direction. And that small amount of lift there is going to hold this control surface, this is the elevator, so I'll just put elevator for that elevator and I'll put trim for that right and this is going to hold the control surface in that position so what's going to happen is the airflow is going to come along yeah it's going to deflect over there and then it's going to deflect that way up that way create a little bit of lift so it's going to create a small amount of lift at the trailing edge of the control surface to hold the control surface in a set position okay right so that's how a trim tab aerodynamically works now for the for 
any assessment that you get if it's asked to explain the operation of a trim tab and I'm going to have to see that okay you can't describe that to say oh the trim tab produces a little bit of lift somewhere I need to see where the trim tab produces lift and how visually how that holds the control surface into position because as, as you can imagine if that trim tab wasn't there what we would have is we'd have loads of airflow bashing at the bottom of this control surface wouldn't we hitting into that pushing it back into line okay so the trim tab you just the trim tab the trim tab stays in that position stays pointed up like that and that a bit of lift that it creates in that direction holds the elevator in that position simple as that right so how does it work mechanically how does it work so that's how it works aerodynamically right aerodynamically it's creating lift in the opposite direction oh, that's a rubbish i'm gonna get rid of that oh my god the world's worst aerofoil just got the draw it on. okay so upside down aerofoil on the tail um we're holding that position all we do at the front of the aircraft we will have a trim wheel okay and that trim wheel yeah will be operated by the pilot it might have little little nails on it if, if some of you might have seen that in the um in the cockpit of the the jet provost and that will have some cables that will go back and will go down to there and those cables will be attached to the trim the trim tab there and they, the so what you'll have is you'll have a manual input which moves the trim tabs up or down depending on where you want them okay so going back to our model, model airplane here so if i wanted to keep the trim in that position like that yeah and I push the nose down to account for the tail being heavy just need to push the nose down to account for the tail being heavy yeah so what we we'll do is create extra lift at the tail to account for that the trim tab would be in this position so the elevator would be down the little trim tab would be pointed up over you would move the the the, the um, trim wheel in the cabin move the trim wheel and you move that a certain direction and that would move the trim tab in the right place and then you leave the trim wheel set where it is and that would mean that the aircraft despite it being tail heavy would still fly in a straight and level flight okay and that is operated manually by a trim wheel in the cockpit and a cable or linkage going back to the the trim tab itself okay manually operated now why i've emphasized that why that is manually operated is balance tabs are a little bit different and they are automatically operated okay so in the next part i'm going to talk about balance tabs so that's trim tabs that's the very basic uh, description of trim tabs can be found on ailerons elevators anything like that. there's some advanced trim stuff where you can use stabilators and you can use the whole stabilator to trim the aircraft that's how 737s and stuff work uh, large airliners um i will cover that now but for them the, this bit this this basic stuff here this is all i want you to be able to do uh, if you get this right i'd rather you got this right than start talking about stabilizers and things like that okay so for trim tabs stick to the basic operation of a trim tab um okay right straight away easy balance tabs Now aerodynamically, balance tabs work in exactly the same way as trim tabs, or pretty much. It's a really rubbish pen, let's get rid of that. So a balance tab, same sort of aerodynamics, same sort of things going on, but for different reasons. Okay, so now we've got this elevator. We want to move this elevator. Unfortunately, we have 300 knots of relative airflow on both sides of it, right? And if we try and move that big piece of metal into that relative airflow what do you think is going to happen that relative airflow is going to push back so we need some way if we have i think some of you saw this i did a demo in the in the hangar when i had time and i got i know that david for example in group a uh, was in the cockpit pulling back on the stick and i got on the back of the the elevator and i pulled it down so i'm now the relative airflow and he could not move that Okay, and David's a big lad. He couldn't, even with the, with the mechanical advantage of having the control stick, he still couldn't move that elevator. And that's what this relative airflow is doing. It's stopping the elevator moving. So we need to give 
the elevator a little bit of help. So we're going to use this force against itself. Okay, we've got all this air dynamic force. So if we just have a, a balance tab now, yeah, so that's now a balance tab. Throw that pen away, it's rubbish. Little black fingers, aren't they? Right, okay, so that's now a balance tab. If we move this down slightly, down in this direction to here, the relative airflow is going to hit that balance tab and it's going to push against it according to Newton's third law of motion. So now what we'll have, yeah, is we'll have this sort of situation here. So it still acts, the, the balance tab still moving in the opposite direction of the main control surface. So the main control surface, the elevator, is still moving up like that. Balance tab's in the opposite direction, okay. So we have BL for balance. And then our airflow is going to be pushing against the elevator and it's going to want to push the elevator down, right? But the balance tab is going to create some lift. So the balance tab, because we've got this camber here and we've got this deflection here, is going to create some lift in that direction. because of the relative airflow. So it's fighting against the relative airflow. The relative airflow wants to push the elevator back down. The pilot's trying to struggle to, on the control surface to pull it up. And the balance tab just creates a little bit of lift to help the pilot move the control surface. So we're talking about things like Jack Provost. We're talking about things like Cessnas. We're talking about aircraft that are, have mechanical controls, no hydraulics in there whatsoever. It's all cables. You've seen that, you've taken them to bits in the hangar as part of the aircraft maintenance unit, okay? So you've seen the cables, you've seen the turnbuckles and all the other sort of stuff that goes on, on with that. The ALO operating spools and stuff like that. Um, so that mechanical stuff isn't powerful enough on its own. So we're going to use a bit of the airflow. The airflow right over the, the training edge. The balance tab comes down. That creates a little bit of lift and that actually lifts the control surface into position. Now it doesn't hold it there, it just helps it to move into position. Okay, the trim tab is the one where you can manually adjust it and you can have the control surface at any place that you want. That's trim. Balance is completely different. Balance is to help you move the control surface. Right, so when we look at balance tabs here, how do they operate mechanically? Uh, we'll just get rid of some of this here. So for, um, for, for kind of merit quality work, what I'm looking for is trim and balance, the difference between the two, and the aerodynamic and mechanical operation of both systems. So the aerodynamic operation is how does it modify lift exactly, why does it modify lift, and the mechanical operation would be how would it do that. So balance tabs operate automatically. Now, just rubbing that off now. There's your, you just do the back end of your main, so there's your main control surface there, and there's your balance tab. Okay, and it's all do, if you remember the lessons that you've had with Mark Fuller, you have a fixed linkage there, if that can't move, okay, and we attach that to a linkage there, right, we'll find that, you know, when this goes down over, this rod can't get any shorter, so it's going to push against this bit here, so when it goes down to the, to this, bit here, if I just draw that in a dotted line, right, that rod, if it's the same length, is now going to pull, going to push the, the, the tab, it's going to push that back into line, yeah, so just draw the middle bit, right, and now that rod will be to there, and we'll push it back in line, and then when it gets down to this point here, okay, basically it gets towards the rod, a bit, a bit close at the rod, so that's at full extension. So you know that's at full extension. And it pulls down on it, and when it when it rotates down this way, it's at full extension again, and it's going to pull that into, into place. That would probably be closer to, well, probably closer to that there. It would go off that. Yeah. So that's I've just looked at that myself. What I've just drawn there. That's very confusing. Okay, we'll stick the the, the one the one drawing there. I think. Sorry about that. Right. So there's your control surface and there is yeah fixed length rod. And what what happened to that is got a pivot there and a pivot there. 
when you pivot that down over okay this rod can't get any shorter so it's going to push that out the way yeah, and it's going to push into the line when it goes down this way it again it can't get any shorter so it's actually going to pull can't get any longer so it's going to pull it against that way and you're going to end up with the, the trim tab basic sorry not the trim tab the balance tab so it's easy to get mixed up right the balance tab um if you were going to take some notes on it automatically moving in the opposite direction to the main control surface balance tab automatically moves in the opposite direction to the main control surface and it does that via a fixed linkage okay and if you draw that fixed linkage on there then you'll see that that's that you know you can just explain it that way right so that's true and balance tabs just a quick recap just checking the camera still on because i'm going to red light on the front of it yeah we're okay so basically quick recap trim tabs are there to adjust the position of the control surfaces to a set position and keep them in that position to counter crosswinds and nose tail heavy situations and that is manually adjusted by a wheel in the cockpit via the pilot manually adjusted balance tabs automatically adjust themselves whenever the pilot pulls on the stick or pushes on the stick they automatically go in the opposite direction to the main control surface and they create a little bit of lift at the back end of that control surface to help them move into position balance tabs help control surfaces move into position trim tabs are there so you can kind of freeze the control surface in a set position that's all i'm going to cover on trim and balance tabs if you